In the early 20th century, the United States came to the realization that it might someday have to defend both of its coasts in a world war. As a matter of national defense, in 1919, Major Dwight D. Eisenhower led a military convoy across the country to prove you could go coast to coast with a car, truck, or even a tank. The young officer was appalled to see just how difficult it was to get across North America in anything other than a railroad car. What came from that trip was the Lincoln Highway, which linked New York to San Francisco. 37 years later, that young officer was President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower pushed for and got a bill creating an interstate transportation system. One of those interstates was to go through southern Wyoming. As had been the case for so many other transcontinental projects, the section passing through Wyoming was going to be the crux of the matter. I feel a little silly, like one of those uh, network reporters that sent out to stand in front of a hurricane and tell you the weather's bad. Right now, I'm uh, five miles north of Elk Mountain, and about 100 feet from Interstate 80. That would be the most closed section of interstate in North America. Whilst I feel silly standing out in this weather, there's really no way for me to go to the location and not tell this story in this weather. Because this day, where it's blowing about 50 miles an hour, is absolutely normal at Elk Mountain. And everyone knows it. The Overland Trail and stage route passed by here in 1860 through 1868. But of course, it was never used in winter. Fort Halleck was built at the base of Elk Mountain to protect the route from Arapaho and Cheyenne war parties. But of course, the tribes were smart enough to stay away from here in the winter. In fact, the fort only stayed open for four years. The army shut it down after losing multiple soldiers in blizzards. In 1868, the Transcontinental Railroad was routed about 25 miles north of Fort Halleck partially on the complaints of the Elk Mountain weather by the men stationed at Fort Halleck, but mostly on the recommendation of Jim Bridger. Bridger knew the weather here, and he advised Greenville Dodge to put the railroad about 25 miles north of here. It gets less snow, and it's a little more sheltered from the wind. Dodge listened to the expert and listened to the local, and he was right to do so. The Lincoln Highway, uh, the first highway to link the coasts of the United States also followed Bridger's advice. It essentially paralleled the railroad tracks all the way across the country, and it went through those rail towns to the north, kept them going. Those are towns like Bosler, Wilcox, Medicine Bow, and Hanna. When Interstate 80 was being planned, locals, politicians, and highway officials were asked for their opinions. Those aforementioned towns had come to exist because of the railroad, but by the 20th century, they were earning money from travelers on the Lincoln Highway. Motel owners, shopkeepers, and gas stations did not want all those travelers diverted to the south, so they pushed for the new road to follow the old one. Local ranchers in the Elk Mountain area also didn't need a major highway splitting their pastures, and they knew the weather would keep it closed a good bit of the year anyway. We're at 7,200 feet above sea level here, so snow falls more months of the year than it doesn't sometimes quite heavily. We're also in what's called the Wyoming Wind Corridor. Wyoming Wind Corridor is a gap in the Rocky Mountains. And when you get different weather systems in the Great Basin, say over Nevada, versus the Great Plains over Nebraska, they have to equalize each other with the wind. The Wyoming Wind Corridor is what gives Wyoming more hurricane force wind days per year in Florida. So the local ranchers, business owners, and Wyoming officials pushed for the road to follow the original highway. They didn't want to lose business, but they also knew the weather would keep it closed in the Elk Mountain location. However, the trucking industry had a different issue. They pushed for the straightest line possible, which was the route that would go right by Elk Mountain. That route would be 21 miles shorter and being shorter, they said it would save them millions of dollars per year in fuel. The truckers lobbied all that could be swayed and even those that couldn't, and eventually got it their way. 
The road was finished with great fanfare on October 3rd, 1970. Government dignitaries came out and proclaimed what a wonderful thing the interstate promised to be for the people of Wyoming and America. The ribbon-cutting ceremony had an official program printed by the highway department, and in it were a few lines about the debated location. Quote, the department has the men, equipment, and facilities necessary to do the job. We will keep it open all the time. Unquote. One official stated as much as the ribbon was cut and the road was open. Four days later, a blizzard descended on Wyoming and the road was closed. Over the following three months, there were 120 weather-related accidents right through this stretch of the interstate, and it had to be closed for over 200 hours. Over the following years, highway department spent untold amounts of money on snow fencing to try and catch the snow as it was getting close to the interstate. Not only that, they came up with a whole new design for a snowplow just to work on this bit of the interstate. Still, the interstate is closed more here than anywhere else. It is closed virtually in every winter month for some period of time. One accident in the winter of 2020 ended in a 100 plus car and truck pileup with four killed and dozens injured. The road was closed for nearly a week after that. I-80 has been closed by storms here around Elk Mountain every month of the year except July and August. One wonders how much lost revenue the trucking industry has endured by cutting out just those 21 miles. Normally we end with a picturesque drone fadeaway at the location. As my drone would have blown to Omaha if I'd tried to film with it, we will just end with a few shots from around the state. See you soon.